So hi, my name is Harish, and uh, the topic which I'm going to talk about today is gold price fluctuation and its impact on the Indian economy. Indians, you as you know, are basically hungry for gold, whether it's for investment, gifts, as tribute to deities, weddings, or any festive occasion. Gold is an important part of the equation. Gold is considered to be a symbol of prosperity, good fortune, and has an inherent value in terms of purity and wealth. According to the reports, people in India hold more gold than any other population in the world. While the reasons for this are many, the fact remains that Indians buy and hold gold as a cultural norm. This insatiable hunger for gold has resulted in India's gold imports, constituting a massive 12.5% of its total imports in the year 2012-2013, which is a whooping $61,409 million. In 2012, the total production in the world stood at 4,130 tons and India imported 26.12% of it, which is nearly 1,080 tons of gold which is nearly one-fourth of the world's total gold production. So everything uh, looks great, doesn't it? So where is really the problem? Uh, the main problem uh, with this is that lies with respect to the CAD, which is the current account deficit. A country's exports must be more than its imports to maintain a favorable balance and grow the per capita income of the country. Experts and analysts and, uh, and the RBI say that we can sustain only uh, with the maximum consistent deficit of up to 2.5% but as of December 2012 we have a current account deficit of 6.7%. As the current account deficit worsens, the RBI has to buy up excess rupees with forex reserves in order to stabilize the exchange rate. This leads to a fall in the forex reserves of the RBI and can lead to balance of payment crisis. Gold also affects the Indian economy because it is a non-productive asset. As a commodity, gold does not add any real value to the productive capacity of the economy. Most of the gold that's purchased in India is stashed away in lockers and safe boxes or gets converted into jewelry. Those who hold gold are just waiting for it to appreciate so that uh, they can see some income and no returns on the investment or uh, just hold it even after it appreciates to increase their personal wealth. People buying gold do so without keeping in mind the macroeconomic ramification and the damages that they are actually causing to the country's economy. But they also obviously can't stop buying gold due to the lack of an alternative, in, uh, like a known alternative uh, investment medium that has the same benefits as gold. That is also other form. There is also an inborn uh, you know, sense of trust in the value of gold, in that it will always hold value, some value, even if all other forms of wealth, like you know, uh, fiat currency or uh, uh, the bank balances, are somehow devalued or inflated for whatever reason. Acts as, as simple as purchasing gold as an investment. Uh, affects the condition of the economy as at least 1 million other Indians are purchasing gold on the same day for the same reason somewhere else in India. So what are the basic reasons like apart from uh, gold being a cultural norm, why are people so much you know uh, crazy about gold? Uh, if you see traditionally Indians always have an affinity towards, they normally always have had an affinity towards gold jewelry and they still have. Uh, in the recent years people have started moving actually from the concept of gold consumption. Uh, like buying for jewelry towards gold investment, buying for future benefits. It is said that gold has been purchased more due to the high returns it offers. But if we compare the returns between the period of April 2003 and March 2013, rupees 1000 investment would have given rupees 5267 in gold, rupees 6158 in Sensex, and rupees 5746 in Nifty. Like a bank deposit at 8% would have uh, given rupees 2337. So, comparatively, stock market has given more benefits. Uh, but still, though stock markets have given better returns, gold wins in terms of the consistency. If we draw a graph between stock and gold, the growth of gold will be uh, more linear and stock market uh, would be filled with crest and tough, uh, troughs. So, gold is considered more liquid compared to real estate. Uh, it also doesn't you know, require huge investments basically. And typically, it is uh, said like uh, peasants, like the poor people, are the largest consumers of gold. It protects them from inflation. It is said to be the best um, hedge, for, uh, hedge from uncertainties. Uh, also, it has been found that every for every one person increase in the income, uh, gold consumption increases by 1.5 percent. So, so far, we have discussed about all the issues and the reason for gold being such a valuable asset for the Indian people. Uh, let's now see like uh, the 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 ways in which you know this. Uh, uh, problem can be tackled. Okay, so uh, the, the the past measures and the future uh, the future measures that could have, could be taken in order to you know address this uh, gold fluctuation issue and its uh, effect on the Indian economy. 
Um, so starting with to counter this, RBI uh, had already implemented an 80-20 system wherein 80% of the imports would be used to satisfy domestic demand and 20% would have to be re-exported after value addition uh, by turning the gold bricks into jewelry. Uh, in 2011 to 2012, around 56% of all the gold that was being imported came through banks who sold it to the public in form of gold coins. This, in 2013, the finance ministry banned banks from selling gold coins in an effort to control the expanding current, accounts, uh, current account deficit. Also, the government is, uh, uh, is raising the import duty to combat the rising import rates of the gold. Uh, between January 2012 and 2013, the import duty has been raised uh, like five times from 1% to 10%. Uh, this move has been mimicked by Sri Lanka as well in an attempt to curb gold smuggling. Among uh, uh, India's three primary imports, which are the crude oil, cooking oil, and gold, only the first two are vital necessities. They are like, you know, so India is actually uh, uh, trying to compensate for the imports on gold through investing in crude oil and other cooking oil. Apart from these uh, past measures that have already been taken, uh, the government can also look for other future options you know, in, order, in order to address this issue. Uh, there are small things the government can do to decrease the damage dealt by the massive amounts of gold being imported. One of these is to reduce the amount of non-essential imports, uh, like uh, spectacles which are about nearly 336 crores, dolls around 431 crores, uh, cosmetics around 2713 crores, etc. So educating the unemployed masses in the production of these items can massively reduce the dependency on importing them, tilting the international trade scales in our favour while consequently creating employment and even help boost exports. So the next uh, uh, essential and more, most important measure would be to uh, create awareness among the Indian youths. The possible future measures to control this issue would be to educate the youth about investing in other mediums apart from gold that will offer them excellent returns or at least similar returns on the investments so that and also the awareness that by doing this they will also be saving the Indian economy as a byproduct. So uh, combined with the past measures which have already been taken, these additional uh, suggested two measures uh, if implemented can really help in addressing this issue. So thank you.